Riley Longhill, ghost hunter, along with her trusty dog, Geist. Riley is the fictional alter ego of author Michelle Parisa Wasik, who is also known as Michelle PW. All stories are a product of the author's imagination. For more on Riley, along with musings from Michelle and more, visit mpwnovels.com. Hello, it is Michelle Pariza Wasik, also known as Michelle PW, fiction author and host, or I should say my alter ego is Riley Longhill, and you of course are listening to The Adventures of Riley Longhill Ghost Hunter. And you can just check out more of me and my uh, fiction books, psychological thrillers with some mystery, suspense, with some romance and paranormal in it. And you can just check out more about that at my blog website, mpwnovels.com. And one of my books, especially since it, I'm not sure when you're listening to this, but when I'm recording it, it is a few weeks before Halloween. And one of my books actually starts on Halloween night at a Halloween party, which is The Stolen Twin. And not only is The Stolen Twin available as a paperback and a Kindle, it is also available as an audiobook. So if you like to listen to your books, you may want to check out The Stolen Twin. And to wet your whistle, here is a bit of the description. On the surface, Kit Caldwell had it all. A senior in college with her future ahead of her, lots of friends, lots of parties, not to mention also having the eye of Tommy, the star quarterback of the football team. But underneath, Kit's life is a charade, built on a foundation of secrets and lies, including one so dark it threatens to tear her world apart. Her twin sister, Kat, was kidnapped when they were both seven, never to be heard from again. That is, until one dark Halloween night. But is it really Cat, Or is it someone else? Someone playing a sinister and deadly game? So that again is The Stolen Twin, and you can check it out. Uh, that and more at mpwnovels.com. And don't forget to grab your free novella, The Secret Diary of Helen Blackstone, which leads into my near new series, which is The Secrets of Redemption series that I'm working on now. Okay, so let us get into this episode of Riley, which is episode 10. Wait a minute, that scratching noise is coming from the closet. To get you caught up, in case you don't remember what happened in episode 9, uh, Riley is in room 16 of the Hotel Vendum, which is Abby and Noble's room. Noble is the cat, and Abby is the person. They're both ghosts. And she's investigating and she is talking to Craig and she was is just realizing that there's been some scratching that she thought was going outside of the door. And now she's thinking it's, it's happening in the closet. Her compass is going wacko and her and compasses are supposed to help track if there is a ghost around. And so it's looking like maybe there's a haunting. So Let's see what happens uh, with episode 10. Wait a minute. That scratchy noise is coming from the closet. I froze. Craig's words echoing in my head. Maybe your compass is acting like that because there's a ghost in your room. The phone crackled. Riley? Craig's voice floated out. Are you there? I licked my suddenly dry lips as I desperately searched the room. Everything appeared to be normal except for my compass, which was still weirdly pointed to the west no matter which way I turned it. Riley, Craig said again. I'm here, I said, forcing the words out of my numb mouth. I can't see. There it was again. Screech. That scratchy noise. I gasped and scrambled backwards, knocking the chair over in the process. It was coming from the closet. Riley, what's going on there? Craig demanded, his voice growing louder. Craig, it's coming from the closet, I said as quietly as I could. What's coming from the closet? The noise, the scratching noise. There's something in your closet? I backed up a couple more steps. I think so. Riley, Craig sounded panicked. You need to get out of your room now. Along with the scratching, I heard the jingling of the bell again, almost like a dog collar or maybe a cat collar. I don't think it's a person, I said. It's probably Noble. Who is Noble? The cat. Now that I was remembering the story, I could feel myself start to calm down. 
After Abby's husband left, Abby locked herself in this room and locked the cat in the closet until they both starved to death. People have said they have heard scratching and bells jingling from the closet before. So you think there's a ghost cat in the closet, Craig said, sounding more than a little skeptical. What if you're wrong? Well, I suppose it could be Abby in there, but I don't remember anyone reporting any sightings of her in the closet. I didn't mean Abby. Craig sounded like he was trying very hard to remain patient. I meant, what if it's an actual person? You know, like someone who is still living? But what about the compass, I argued. You were the one who said the compass not working was a sign that a ghost was here. Or maybe you just broke your compass when you dropped it. I didn't drop it. It just ended up on the floor somehow. Uh Uh-huh. The point being, I wouldn't rule out a person being in your closet based on a compass. I stare at the compass. It still stubbornly refused to shift past west. Well, there's one way to find out, I said. I can go open the closet. No, Craig shouted. What if you're wrong? At least go get someone. I'm a ghost hunter, I said, sounding far more confident than I felt. That's what ghost hunters do. They investigate. I wiped my sweaty hands on my shorts. You can still investigate if someone is with you, Craig argued. Yes, but what if I come back and Noble is gone? I said, I can't miss this chance. Riley, you're going to get yourself killed, Craig moaned. Noble won't hurt me, I said. No one has ever reported any aggression from either Noble or Abby. They're friendly ghosts. I'm not worried about the ghosts, Craig said. I stood up, wiping my hands again on my shorts. I could still hear the scratching and the jangling of the bell. Slowly, I started to inch my way towards the closet. I'm almost at the closet, I whispered. Once I'm there, then... At that moment, a cold draft of air brushed against me, and I shivered. What just happened? Craig asked. Nothing. I just stepped into a cold draft, I said. At least, I think it's just a cold draft. What else could it be? I shivered again, although it had less to do with the draft. As part of you know, if there's a ghost around, I said, the temperature drops. Or it could just be a draft, Craig said. You said the hotel is old, right? Old hotels have drafts. Maybe, I said. My compass is still not working. Thump. The noise was soft, but unmistakable. Something had fallen on the floor. Something behind me. I spun around, nearly dropping the phone. My ghost hunting kit, which I had put back on the table after rescuing my compass from the floor, had fallen. Again. What on earth was going on? Riley, Craig's voice, came out of the phone. Are you still there? Yes, it's just... I tentatively took a few steps towards where my ghost hunting kit lay harmlessly on the floor. My ghost hunting kit fell off the table again. Did you knock it over? No, I was nowhere near it. I was by the closet and there was that scratching noise again in the closet. I could feel the hairs in the back of my neck start to stand on end. Maybe Craig was right and I ought to just get out of here. Maybe you just didn't set it right back on the table, Craig said. The scratching noise was getting louder. Maybe, I said, but what if it's not? What if it's Abby? Abby is knocking your ghost hunting kid on the floor? I thought you said that she was not aggressive. Well, she isn't, but maybe I started edging towards the door. I think you're right, and I need to get some help. Finally, Craig's voice sounded relieved. Yes, get out of there. Be safe. It's probably someone playing a trick on you. Someone playing a trick. I thought of Hal popping out of his room like a bald jack-in-the-box. He was watching me pretty closely. Too closely. Could Hal be doing all this so I would get out of the room and let him do the investigation? Was I going to allow him to chase me out of my first real ghost hunting investigation? I straightened my shoulders. Hell no! Besides, wasn't that my job as a ghost hunter to debunk hauntings that aren't real? If someone was in here playing a trick, I owed it to get to the bottom and expose it. I have to check the closet first, I said to Craig. Wait, what? Riley, no, what if it's dangerous? Too bad, I said firmly, marching over to the closet door. I could still hear the scratching. I'm a ghost hunter, Craig. Part of my job is to investigate. That's what I'm doing is investigating right now. Whether it's a person or noble or Abby, it's my job to get to the bottom of what's going on here. Oh God, Craig said. 
I took a deep breath, squared my shoulders, got a firm grip on the closet door and flung it open and screamed. And that will be continued until next time when we have episode 11. So remember, if you want more Riley, uh, check out mpwnovels.com. And I will see you next time. Tune in next week for another great episode of The Adventures of Riley Longhill Ghost Hunter. And don't forget to check out mpwnovels.com for more fictional goodness from Michelle.